Hi everyone, my name is Zanaji Artis. I am a Deputy Director of Advocacy and co-founder of Zero Hour. Um, and I'm here with Jonah and Zena uh, from the National Children's Campaign and Zero Hour presenting Getting to the Roots of the Green New Deal. And we're doing this for all of you today because we really want you to fully understand what the Green New Deal is. There's so many misconceptions about it right now. And we wanna give this presentation so you can all envision a future that is better than the world we have right now with us. Thanks, Anaji. Hi, everyone. My name is Jonah Gottlieb, and I'm the executive director and co-founder of the National Children's Campaign. Hi, everyone. My name is Zina Abdul-Karim. I'm 18 years old and, and I'm an advocacy coordinator for Zero Hour. Very excited to start. So we're going to jump right in. It's going to begin by talking about how is the climate changing? So the Earth's global temperature has risen one degree Celsius since pre-industrial levels and is still rising. The production of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, and others are warming the Earth's atmosphere. The burning of fossil fuels are the main contributor to the climate crisis. The effects of this over time have resulted in, global, in, in rising global temperatures, unstable climate patterns, and extreme weather, all of which are having catastrophic impacts on our planet. So what's at stake? The Earth's global temperature is expected to rise for more degrees Celsius by 2100 um, if drastic worldwide changes are not made immediately. This will be inevitably and irreversibly damaging to our life on Earth as we know it. Yeah, and so one of the ways that life as we know it will dramatically shift is our food systems. And so uh, many um, of the vo ways that we get food right now um, is dependent on seasons and temperature and climate. And so as the global uh, world temperature rises, um, we'll have more and more food deserts, which means that it'll be harder and harder for many people to get food, which will cause more and more famines and more and more starvation and human lives being lost due to the climate crisis. And so that's just one of the many ways that the climate is impacting people's lives. But there are also environmental issues that we want to talk about when we're talking about Earth Day and talking about environmental issues that uh, impact humans. And so one of them is fracking, um, which is very common, especially in the Midwest of the United States, um, which is the process of injecting liquid at a really high pressure into subterranean rocks. And this forces fissures and then oil and gas companies are able to extract these fossil fuels. And these can cause earthquakes and contamination and all sorts of chemicals in the soil and drinking water, which can be super harmful for people. Offshore drilling is another super harmful way that people are getting oil and gas for uh, these fossil fuel companies. And this is super dangerous because not only does it impact the animals and plants in the ocean, um, around where these companies are drilling, but it impacts the people who live nearby and in, in oceans um, through these, uh, because of their food systems being impacted, and also because uh, the water that they drink is very contaminated. And lastly, deforestation is a huge issue um, that causes, uh, dramatically causes ecosystems to shift um, by removing all plants and animals to repurpose the land for other uses. Yeah, thanks, Jonah. So what does fracking look like? So we wanted to show these images because fracking is something that's talked about a lot um, in environmental discourse, but most people don't really know what exactly fracking is. Um, so as Jonah mentioned, fracking is this process of drilling into the ground um, to get access to natural gas or oil. So in the diagram on the left, you can see a vertical drill going straight down into the ground. But in many cases, there is also a horizontal drill. Um, and through this process, uh, companies will pump sludge full of different toxins that no one knows about into the ground to break up this rock and get access to those fossil fuels. And as you can see, what that causes is potential leaching into groundwater uh, that can affect people's drinking water. Yeah, and so some more issues um, that have come, come up as a result of human interference and exploitation of land and nature 
Um, industrial agriculture and especially animal agriculture um, are huge contributors to both the climate crisis and inv other environmental issues that impact people's lives. And so deforestation is um, a huge factor in animal agriculture because oftentimes forests are cleared in order to raise uh, animals or grow crops. And uh, the industrial agriculture industry also uses a bunch of super harmful chemical fertilizers and other practices um, that depletes the land and harms people's health. Plastic accumulation and in oceans and in the ground is also super harmful for the planet, as well as forever chemicals that, because they're man-made, aren't able to be broken down. And so they stay in the ecosystem forever and can really harm people's health. Fortunately, um, there is a framework called the Green New Deal that will address so many of these issues that we've mentioned and many more, which we're going to talk about in the rest of this presentation. So what is the Green New Deal? So the Green New Deal is a resolution. It's not a bill. Um, and it's aimed at addressing climate change through a just transition to renewable energy sources. Um, it is a vision for the future. Uh, so the Green New Deal as a resolution provides a framework for legislation that can be passed in the future to address all the problems that we mentioned previously. It is also a structural change to our entire economic and energy system it has the potential to create lots of jobs um, in the process. It's an immediate and crucial climate action because of course, as we mentioned, the earth is warming and climate change is happening right now and we need this action now. And the Green New Deal is a method to address that. And it also addresses socioeconomic inequality. All right, so um, we are going to jump into what the Green New Deal is not. There are lots of misconceptions as to what the Green New Deal is that often scare people away from supporting the deal. Um, so we're going to start off by dismantling that. So the Green New Deal is not an anti-meat campaign. You will still be able to enjoy your hamburgers. It is not a loss of jobs. In fact, it will create lots of new green jobs, 20 million to be exact. It is not no more flying planes and it is not a decline of the US economy. In fact, it would regenerate many of new markets. So the Green New Deal is focused on renewable carbon neutral energy by 2030. It is going to incorporate a just transition to renewable energy for all workers, which means that if you do experience some trauma in the transition to a green um, workforce, you will be supported. You will have access to new work. You will have access to a sustainable lifestyle. Um, it is a complete economic transformation in the, uh, in the energy grid, and it requires a mass mobilization of our government and its people to combat the climate crisis. So if the title, The Green New Deal, sounds familiar to you, it's probably because you're referencing or you've heard of the New Deal, which was enacted between the years of 1933 and 1939. It was a series of programs, public work projects, financial reforms, and uh, regulations enacted by President Roosevelt. Um, it, created, it was created to respond to the needs of relief, reform, and recovery from the Great Depression. The difference between the Green New Deal and the New Deal is that the Green New Deal includes everyone and is not just designed for white Americans. Um, unfortunately, when the Green New Deal was created, it did not include black and brown and exploited communities. So that's one way that the Green New Deal is different. It incorporates environmental degradation, not just economic development, and it takes on the challenge of addressing the greatest threat humanity has ever experienced, which is the climate crisis. And it also it prioritizes union labor. Yeah, thanks, Zena. So what does House Resolution 109, the Green New Deal, say about all of this? So it reads, quote, it is the duty of the federal government to create a Green New Deal to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions through a fair and just transition for all communities and workers and to create millions of good high wage jobs and ensure prosperity and economic security for all people of the United States. Yeah, and so one key factor of the Green New Deal is economic justice and a just transition. 
So oftentimes when people think about big environmental policies and transitioning to renewable energy, they think that our economy is going to somehow be negatively impacted or that many people are going to lose their jobs. And that's just not true. So the Green New Deal resolution guarantees safe union jobs. And as Zina said, many leading economists have actually estimated that a Green New Deal would create up to 20 million new jobs. And so these are safe, permanent, $15 an hour minimum wage jobs. And for people in the fossil fuel industry who do have to move to new jobs, there's education and job training to work in renewable energies and work in manufacturing these things. It also guarantees universal health care and makes sure that public transit um, is available for every American so that more people can get to these jobs. And so the Green New Deal was introduced uh, in February of 2019 in the House by Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and in the Senate by Senator Ed Markey. All right, so next up is what is environmental justice? The climate crisis and other environmental issues disproportionately impact frontline and exploited communities. Unfortunately, this includes Black and communities of color, Indigenous people, migrant communities, low-income people, women, and deindustrialized and rural communities, elderly people, and house people, people with disabilities, and young people, since we will face the lasting impacts of this crisis. So here are some examples of environmental injustice. I'm sure we're all aware of the lead poisoning crisis in Flint, Michigan, which has been a, a, a devastation for nearly 10 years now. Um, another example of environmental injustice are when fossil fuel plants are built near or within low income communities and communities of color. Um, another one is when indigenous communities have oil pipelines that we have seen burst time and time again throughout history built on their lands. I know that Jonah also has an experience uh, regarding environmental injustices. Yeah, and so oftentimes when we think of the climate crisis, we think that it's going to hit people and impact people in the future. But as people in my community and other communities around the world have learned, the climate crisis is already impacting people's lives now. So I'm from Northern California. And so for the past three years, my community has been devastated by these massive wildfires. I have friends in New York and in, uh, uh, in Puerto Rico and in Houston who have been impacted by these hurricanes and floods. And I know that for so many people, especially in the global south, these issues are already impacting their lives. And so the, so the question of solving the climate crisis is not how can we avert the effects, but how can we make sure it doesn't get any worse and keep more people's lives from being destroyed? And so what the Green New Deal talks about when it addresses environmental injustice is uh, the following. So whereas climate change, pollution, environmental destruction have exacerbated systemic, racial, regional, social, environmental, and economic injustices by disproportionately affecting indigenous peoples, communities of color, migrant communities, deindustrialized communities, depopulated rural communities, the poor, low-income workers, women, the elderly, the unhoused, people with disabilities, and youth. Yeah, and so... Obviously, as you can see from that quote, environmental justice and the Green New Deal are intertwined um, because the Green New Deal is addressing environmental, inju environmental justice. And environmental justice is reforming systemic ecological prejudices while being intentional about how policies might impact marginalized communities. So the Green New Deal tries to do this by guaranteeing clean air and water health care, healthy food, and more to every American. It guarantees the stoppage of all fossil fuel projects right now and in the future, no new constructions. It also levels the, the economic playing field, which currently disadvantages certain populations by creating millions of $15 an hour safe union jobs. The Green New Deal also acknowledges all treaties with indigenous peoples, respects indigenous sovereignty, and mandates the free, prior, and informed consent of indigenous peoples for all decisions that affect indigenous peoples and their traditional territories. And so what does the Green New Deal say? Um, it reads, quote, the Green New Deal aims to promote justice and equity by stopping current, preventing future, and repairing historic oppression of indigenous peoples. 
communities of color, migrant communities, deindustrialized communities, depopulated rural communities, the poor, low income workers, women, the elderly, the unhoused, people with disabilities, and youth. Yeah, and so we have an amazing opportunity um, when we're solving a crisis as big as the, cri the climate crisis to hit the reset button on all these systems of oppression that have caused the climate crisis and are currently keeping certain communities and marginalized populations down. And so when we solve the climate crisis through something as drastic as the Green New Deal, we're able to implement radical changes to all sectors of the United States and surpass conventional barriers to address discrepancies throughout the nation's current standings. And so in other words, the Green New Deal recognizes that the climate crisis was caused by these systems of oppression and so actively works to dismantle them as it solves the climate crisis. And so the Green New Deal provides a green vision for the future because it provides all people in the United States with high quality health care, affordable, safe, and adequate housing, economic security, clean air and clean water, healthy and affordable food, and access to nature. So what can all of you do with all this information about the Green New Deal? We hope that you use the Green New Deal as a catalyst for change in your own communities. We want to give you a few tips on how you can do that. So first, you can become a Vote for Our Future ambassador at bit.ly slash to the roots. You can also sign up for updates about our ongoing campaign at voteforourfuture.org. You can have a conversation with a family member or someone in your community about the Green New Deal because you've just learned so much about it. And you can host your own community webinar using the slides that we've just presented here where they are located at voteforourfuture.org slash slides. And the last thing you can do is get involved and make sure that you're choosing the elected officials who would be implementing policies like this that would impact so many people's lives. And so you can register to vote at bit.ly slash strike then vote or use your phone to scan the QR code on the screen right now. Um, so thank you all again so much for watching um, this presentation. We wish you a happy Earth Day. Please be sure to check out the National Children's Campaign and Zero Hour. Check out our websites and all our social medias. And make sure to check out these slides at voteforourfuture.org slash slides. And make sure to keep talking about the Green New Deal in your own communities.